coming up, get to know the magnificent wildflowers that give Florida its name as the Land of Flowers. Learn to identify these natural beauties in the wild and discover where to find Florida wildflowers growing naturally throughout our state. That's all next on Wildlife Matters. This program is made possible by the following generous contributors. Wildflowers have captivated people's attention for decades. Their beautiful colors and intricate shapes excite and delight our senses. Here in Florida, we're privileged to have the third largest number of wildflowers in the continental United States, a rich and unique assemblage of wildflowers you'll find nowhere else. But with Florida's exploding growth and concrete replacing natural land, Florida native wildflowers are in extreme jeopardy. Many of our endemic wildflowers, which grow only in Florida, are threatened, rare, or endangered, living on the verge of extinction. That's why we must make it a priority to defend and protect Florida native wildflowers before they're gone for good. Getting to know Florida wildflowers is the first step in understanding the larger conservation picture. So on today's program, we'll tell you a little bit about Florida wildflowers and show you where they live. You'll learn what's being done to increase their populations and what you can do to help. I hope you enjoy today's program called Florida Wildflowers as much as I enjoyed making it. Because of its mild and humid climate, Florida is the only state in the continental United States to have both temperate and tropical flora. Included in this flora is a unique collection of native wildflowers well known about since early times. In the spring of 1513, Spanish explorer Juan Ponce de Leon named the land he saw as Florida, land of flowers, when greeted by large strands of wildflowers forming masses of purples, yellows, and whites. Most of Florida's native plants are considered wildflowers, and of these wildflowers, nearly 300 species are endemic to Florida, meaning they grow nowhere else but within the borders of Florida. Most of our endemic wildflowers grow in the Panhandle and in northern and central Florida. Wildflowers can be found blooming year-round in parks, reserves, and on natural lands throughout the state. But despite the never-ending growing season, most Florida wildflower species have particular times when the majority are blooming. That's why the best way to see the wide variety of wildflowers Florida has to offer is to visit the same natural area each month for a full year. You can do this on your own, or you can go with wildflower enthusiast and park volunteer Paul Eisenbrown. Are the leaves opposite? Paul gives a monthly tour called What's Blooming, where he takes people out to discover Florida wildflowers blooming in their native habitats. Recently, I went with Paul on his monthly tour at Tosahatchee State Reserve in East Central Florida. I was able to capture many spectacular blooms on camera for this program. On the tour, we saw the beautiful pine hyacinth, a native wildflower with a delicate purplish-pink bell-shaped flower. It's endemic to Florida and found in pineland habitats in the central and southern parts of the state. We also saw the ladies' tresses, a very ornate wildflower with a spiral of tiny white flowers flowing down and around its green stem. This wildflower is actually an orchid and the lovely yellow colic root with its many tubular yellow flowers on its long spike-like stalk. This wildflower gets up to three feet tall and grows throughout Florida. Paul, you're very active with helping people to learn about Florida wildflowers. 
through your What's Blooming tour that you give once a month here at Tosahatchee State Park. What do you do with people on that tour? Well, we come out here uh, once a month on a second or a third Saturday uh, between February and November. And we try to find what's blooming at that time and help people identify them and learn about the uh, flowers that are not only here, but that they can transfer to other areas that they might visit. So it's wildflowers that grow at this particular park, but a lot of them grow throughout the state? Absolutely. You have the similar habitat in uh, other places. Uh, there might be some more or less of one particular species here that might not be in another area, but uh, yes, they grow in other places. Hmm. In the winter, there's a certain type that pops up, such as the uh, what we call carnivorous flowers. Um, that, those are uh, flower sets. What does that mean? That means uh, insectivorous is probably more a correct term. They don't go around eating raccoons and animals per se. It's just uh, there are plants that are attracted, uh, attract insects, and they are absorbed into the plant oh, in various methods through chemicals. Hmm. Of all the states, Florida has the largest number and diversity of insectivorous plants. Some of the insectivorous plants we observed on Paul's What's Blooming tour were the yellow butterwort. This plant has a single yellow flower and is common on wet sites. Its sticky basal leaves trap insects that are then absorbed, providing needed nitrogen to the plant. The yellow butterwort is listed as threatened in Florida. The hooded pitcher plant is another insectivorous plant we observed on the tour. It's the most common and widespread of our pitcher plants. Its beautiful pale yellow flowers look like tiny umbrellas. Insects become trapped in its hollow hooded leaves and are then digested. Another one is a sebacea. Early on we've seen Savacia grandiflora, which is a five-petal pinkish flower. Right now, this time of the year, there's a whiter version of that. The narrow-leaf Savacia, or the Savacia brevifolia, is coming up. Mm. So, uh, a lot of times you see different species, different colors. Milkweeds are also a very interesting and beautiful wildflower we saw on Paul's What's Blooming tour. They're not only popular with people, but popular with our native pollinators. Pollinators, which include butterflies, bees, moths, skippers, wasps, and other insects, are having a hard time surviving in Florida. Studies show their numbers are decreasing due to factors such as human demand for land and our increased use of insecticides. That's why plants that support our native pollinators are vital to Florida's future ecological health. Milkweeds are one of those species of plants. On Paul's tour, we observed several species of milkweeds, including the scarlet milkweed with its striking red-orange petals, the swamp milkweed with its soft pinkish rose petals, the butterfly weed with its showy orange-yellow petals, and the milkweed with its simple white petal clusters. Paul, there's a couple of wildflowers out here blooming today that you find particularly interesting. Which ones are they? Well, in this area, um, some of the things that are really interesting are is that you have flowers in the same family that uh, have some differences, which gets down to species level. So we're looking at a what's uh, commonly called a sunflower in the aster family. This, the genus of this is Helianthus. Uh, it's a Helianthus angustifolia mm -hmm. is a species name. Some of the characteristics of this flower are it has scabrous leaves, very rough to the touch if mm. you feel them. Ooh, e yeah. Even the stem is very scabrous. Yeah, it feels like a hairy porcupine. And you see a lot of these kinds of sunflowers, but some of the minute difference enable you to differentiate uh, among them. Mm -hmm. So this is a Helianthus angustifolia. Mm -hmm. And in contrast, you said there was one over here that is similar in characteristics, but 
different in a few ways. Yes, and this is probably a pretty stark difference when you get right down to it. This is also a helianthus. Mm -hmm. This is a helianthus radula. Its mm -hmm. common name is a rayless sunflower. Rayless sunflower. It doesn't have not. the ray flowers oh. that you saw in yeah. the previous plant. How about that? A typical sunflower has ray flowers on the outside mm -hmm. and head flowers in the middle. Mm -hmm. They're also called sometimes composite flowers. The other thing different here is you see this stem, mm -hmm. it's called scapos. There are no leaves up and down oh. the stem. All the leaves on this one are basal oh, okay. they're at the base. base, and it's also very rough to the touch, sticking with one of the oh, characteristics like of the, the uh, like helianthus. When you look closely then, the yellow that you see here, the flowers here are dark purplish or brown. Mm -hmm. So the yellow that you see is actually the stamens. Mm -hmm with the uh, pollen on it. So this is the Helianthus radula. That's beautiful. So here you have the same area, two different types of, in the same family, and you get down to species level to differentiate between mm -hmm. the two of them. As you can tell, Paul is very enthusiastic about Florida's native wildflowers. He's an active member of the Florida Native Plant Society and loves to expose people to the vast palette of wildflowers Florida has to offer. He hopes his volunteer work leading the What's Blooming Tour will ultimately inspire people to stand up for these important plants and for the preservation of the natural lands they depend on for survival. It's one thing to go to a natural area and see wildflowers blooming in the wild, but it's another to know what you're looking at. That's where Dr. Walter Taylor's wildflower books come in handy. Dr. Taylor is a University of Central Florida professor emeritus of biology and author of two different books on Florida wildflowers. These books provide an easy way to put a name to the blooming faces you'll see in the field. And you've written two books on Florida wildflowers. The one is called The Guide to Florida Wildflowers and the other is called Florida Wildflowers in Their Natural Communities. And these books are designed to help people when they go out in the wild right. to identify and recognize wildflowers. What is the best way for people to utilize these books when they're out in the field? The best thing is to take mm -hmm. these books oh, out, in yeah. the, out in the field. This one here, <clears throat> a lot of people love this book uh, because it is color-coded. In other words, if you go out and, and find a, a, a purple flower, you can turn to the purple section or to the yellow section, to the yellow flowers, and uh, match them up. That's all, that's all you have to do. And uh, uh, people who, who know nothing about plants, about wildflowers, can take this book and readily identify uh, uh, what, what they find. Uh, common things. This one here, on the other hand, is ranged by the communities and many people appreciate uh, this arrangement, especially if you, it helps you to learn the, the communities of Florida. Uh, for example, this, uh, this first section is on the Pine Flatwoods and we're sitting, sitting in the uh, right midst now. of a f Pine Beautiful Flatwoods one. right now. Between these two books, uh, a person should be able to identify over 800 species wow, of Wow, that's uh, incredible. Plants. And like, for example, in the pine flatwoods, what kind of flowers might they identify? Well, uh, you can find pine lilies, you can find uh, flat top golden rods in the fall, and uh, uh, the uh, milkweeds, uh, that's one of my favorite uh, groups of plants. Um, uh, the hypericums, um, all types of, uh, of wildflowers in these flatwoods. And I think I saw tremendous some, amount. A tremendous amount. I saw some really pretty purple, tall. Right. Ones. Those are the blazing stars that bloom this time of the year in the fall, mm -hmm. and um, they're gorgeous. The one that we have out here now is uh, Lyetris gracilis. Mm -hmm. Dr. Taylor, I am so excited to be out here at Tosahatchee State Park when one of your very favorite wildflowers of all time is blooming. And I see it just ahead. Which one is it? Well, that's uh, the pine lily. It's uh, called that, or it's also sometimes called catsby's lily. Mm, that is just 
brilliant. That um, wildflower is gorgeous. Yes, it is our most outstanding, uh, gorgeous uh, lily uh, that we have in the central wow, uh, peninsula it is area. Wow, unbelievable. Uh, there, there are some uh, very nice lilies up in the panhandle, but this is the only one that we have. As I said, it's sometimes called Catsby's lily, named after Mark Catsby, uh, who wrote uh, the first natural history of, uh, of the uh, United States in the early 1700s uh, when he came from uh, England. Mm -hmm. And this, this, uh, this lily is um, named in his honor, Lilium Catsbia. Another important and popular wildflower in Florida is the tick seed or Coreopsis. This is the official state wildflower of Florida. It's called tick seed because its seeds look like ticks. There are many varieties of the tick seed, including the Coreopsis floridana, which grows in northern and central Florida, the Coreopsis gladiata, found throughout Florida, and the Coreopsis leavenworthii, which also grows throughout Florida and is endemic to Florida, found nowhere else in the world except within Florida's borders. Helping Floridians to learn to love our native wildflowers is the first step in introducing them to the larger conservation picture. If people become passionate about Florida wildflowers, they will want to protect the natural lands on which they live. And by doing so, they will also be protecting the many other endangered and threatened species of wildlife that share those same habitats. In other words, if we protect the gopher apple with its small and showy white flowers that change into rosy round fruit, we will also be protecting the gopher tortoise who depends upon these delicious apples as a mainstay in its diet. With the rapid development of Florida, it's not only important for us to preserve the large tracts of natural lands that remain, it's also important to restore the many compromised natural lands damaged by development. Nancy Bissett is the owner of the Native Zinc and is well known as the founder of Upland Restoration Work in Florida. Most wildflowers in Florida grow in high and dry habitats called uplands. By collecting seed from existing upland habitats and sowing that seed on land damaged by human activities such as cattle ranching, agriculture, and other development, Nancy's restoration work is helping to recreate wildlife habitat and repopulate wildflowers all over the state. We're out here on a uh, site that we could call either dry prairie or wet prairie. This year it's fairly dry, so we can harvest from here. And we're hand collecting a number of wildflower species like blazing star. Um, this is actually the one that you often find in florist bouquets. Water dropwort, toothache grass, uh, bigaloia. We might even collect a little bit of pitcher plant seed. And um, the Florida tick seed, the Coreopsis floridana. Finding pristine upland habitats and then collecting wildflower seed from these habitats without damaging the environment is a very involved process that must be done at just the right time, both by hand and by specialized machines. Julia, could you also collect this plant? It's usually short. Uh -huh. This is called um, uh, star clusters, and it's a carfeferous, and keep mm -hmm. that in a separate bag. Okay. When it's full blooming, it's, it's all purple, just like the blazing stars are. But these are really ready to collect now. Nice seed, guys. This, this is really a great harvest. Let's see what we've got here. Here's, here's some wire grass seed. It's so tiny you probably can't even see it, but it's one of the major seeds that we're after. And there are other grass seeds in here too, such as uh, andropogon or little blue stem, wildflower seeds, blazing star, carfeferous, 
Florida paintbrush, um, pineland purple, those are two of the Carcephora species. And uh, silver-leaved aster. Um, I think I saw some toothache grass in here, perhaps not in this load. Oh yes, and there's a stem from one of the blue stems and a little bit of blue stem seed still hanging in there. Nancy, you do some really good work restoring upland ecosystems back to their original wildlife habitat conditions, and we are in an example of some of the work that you've done. It's a very public example of an upland restoration right here along a big highway. What is restoration work? Why are uplands so important? Well, um, for a long time, uplands have been ignored in restoration because the focus has been on wetlands. But sometimes upland restoration is required to provide additional habitat to wetlands and also just for their own sake because of the kind of species that they have, both wildlife and plant species. What type of wildflowers do you see on a restoration site that you work on? Uh, some of the more dominant and flashy ones are things like blazing star and silver-leaved aster. Uh, some of the carfeffera species like Florida paintbrush and pineland purple and deer tongue, uh, various aster species. Goldenrod, slender goldenrod, uh, in the upland areas may be baldwina or called yellow buttons. There is a beautiful wildflower ahead, Nancy, that is growing on this upland ecosystem that's right outside of Orlando, Florida, that you helped to create. Tell me about this wildflower here. Oh, this is one of my favorites. Um, this is called Florida Paintbrush, and it blooms in the fall. Uh, about um, October is its peak time, about the same time that the blazing stars are also blooming. And it has a sort of flat-topped corum shape with uh, narrow uh, press leaves coming up the stem and a rosette at the bottom. In this case, there is a number of stems coming up from one plant. Mm, yeah. It, um, it, it's also a very favorite nectar plant for butterflies. Hmm. It's and almost fluffy at the top with all those. It actually makes a beautiful cut flower, too. It's gorgeous. It holds quite well. And this is called the Florida Paintbrush? Florida Paintbrush, or Carfeffera scorambosis, if you'd like the scientific name. Protecting the natural lands our Florida wildflowers live on is crucial to the long-term survival of their populations. But there's a secondary way each of us can help to sustain Florida native wildflowers, and that's by using them in our landscapes. Planting a Florida wildflower landscape is as easy as finding a native nursery that sells them. Now you not only uh, harvest seed from natural areas and sow it on disturbed sites, but you also plant that seed into pots at your nursery to sell to the public for their use in landscaping. What type of plants do you sell there at your nursery and how do you get them to grow up to be mature? Uh, well, we, we grow a really wide palette and it's trees and shrubs, yes, but also the grasses such as the ones you see around here and wildflowers. Um, I think I, I just scanned through our list of wildflowers and we grow about 70 different species wow. of wildflowers Woo. that are native to Central Florida. There are nurseries all over that specialize in native plants for landscapes. Plants such as skullcap, Darrow's blueberry, coral honeysuckle, blue-eyed grass, yellow jessamine, tropical sage, Florida flame azalea, and many others. Florida has a unique variety of ecological communities in which our native wildflowers grow. 
Regretfully, most of Florida's original ecological communities have been seriously altered or completely destroyed, with only small portions remaining. This destruction has caused many of Florida's endemic wildflowers to become threatened, rare, or endangered, living on the verge of extinction. These plants are an important part of Florida's identity and need our help to ensure their survival. Some important things you can do to help ease the threats facing Florida wildflowers include continue to support the state of Florida purchase and protection of environmentally sensitive natural land, demand development practices that eliminate clear cutting and that work to preserve natural areas within each development. By protecting and restoring the natural lands on which our wildflowers grow, and by planting Florida native wildflowers in our landscapes, we will help to ensure the survival of these important natural resources and make the statement that in Florida, wildlife matters. For a list of Florida conservation lands where you can go to view native wildflowers, log on to the NatureWise website at www.naturewisetv.org. This program is made possible by the following generous contributors. To share your feedback about this program or to order a copy of Florida Wildflowers, plus additional programs in the Wildlife Matters series, please visit our website at www.naturewisetv.org. Wildlife Matters is created and produced by NatureWise Incorporated, dedicated to improving the environment through educational television and video.